Could there have been a cover-up concerning the death of Anton LaVey? And if there was, what could be the reason they would want to cover up how he really died? We're going to get into that and more right now. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me again. My name is Renee and this is Highly Motivated, a channel where we check out different things that I find interesting and hopefully you do too. For being the high priest of Satanism, there really wasn't much said about the death of Anton LaVey. And it wasn't until after I saw this video that I decided to even look into what the official manner of death was. He was said to have died of a heart attack, and they actually don't even have the day that he died straight. The Wikipedia page says that he died on October 29th, 1997. But then it also says that it was speculated that he died on the 31st of October. When I realized that there was a discrepancy on even the day that he died and I compared it to what I had heard in this particular video, I realized that they had a huge, huge reason to cover up why and how he actually died. So without further ado, let's just check out what this man has to say because this story is one of the craziest, craziest stories you are going to hear. My name's Dave Bryan, and me and my wife, Cheryl, pastor the Church of Glad Tidings in Yuba City, California. I want to tell you a supernatural story that takes us back to 1997, when a lady came into our church that uh, we led to Christ, and she needed a place to stay. We took her into our home, and it was after we had her in our home that uh, supernatural things began to occur. Uh, a lot lots of poltergeist uh, situations that would happen at night. And uh, it's quite a long story. It's contained in a book called The Serpent and the Savior. We had her in our house for 10 and a half months. Uh, we were doing deliverance uh, almost around the clock, day and night, but a tremendous testimony. My name is Cheryl Bryan. I was um, actually born in a place called Miracle Valley. My grandpa was A.A. A. Allen and he was a deliverance miracle worker. And we really hadn't been involved in any of that sort of thing, but we had pastored and just loved people the best we could all of our lives. That's what God and calls us And the Holy to Spirit do. was on me very strongly to fast and pray and was speaking to me that deliverance was important and that we needed to be doing deliverance. And so I would be sharing with my husband, honey, I feel like we need to be doing deliverance. Well, little did I know, we were just around the corner from um, getting a graduate course in deliverance for our kindergarten experience. It was quite, quite intense. This woman came into our church uh, and she was very broken. She was actually bald. She wore a little wig, but it was pretty ratty at the time. And she didn't have teeth and she was very broken. You could tell that she'd been in many difficult situations. And when I saw her, my heart went out to her and I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and the Holy Spirit said, take her into your home and treat her like a blood sister. Well, when I hear the Holy Spirit say something like that, I take it very serious. I went to my husband and I said, honey, we're supposed to take that lady into our home. And God told me to treat her like a blood sister. So the, and Dave said, well, if can you imagine God wants you to take a complete stranger into your home? What would you do? Would you, you would listen, right? I mean, you wouldn't question, would you? You feel like that's the thing to do, then we'll do that. Uh, this woman was born in a satanic ritual um, wow. between uh, Anton LaVey and an Eleni Indian witch uh, that was part of the uh, Eleni Indian nation that Illinois is named after. But even though she was conceived in, in evil and for evil purposes, God had a plan for her and it's a wonderful story. Amen. God said to Cain, if you do good, won't I just, won't I accept you too? It's, it's literally in the Bible. He will accept you if you accept him as your savior. And uh, we had always reached out to broken people, but never had these kinds of experiences. He died for us. And this um, lady 
because I didn't even know her, hardly knew her name. And I asked her if I could take her out for a hamburger. So I said, can I take you to get some lunch? And took her and said, so tell me about your life. Tell me about your story. And she started telling me, I said, when's your birthday? And she said, October 28th. And I said, oh my goodness, my birthday is October 26th. And she said, that was my baby sister's birthday. And I thought, oh my. Because you know the Satanists specifically breed children to be born around the time of Halloween. And and sometimes it's just so they can be sacrificed on that day, to be honest. like Goodness. So God. She's lucky that she's alive to even be here with these people in this in the time of the story set me up to be a sister to this lady and little did i know that um, her sister was sacrificed in a blood ritual and wow. god brought her a new sister that would care for her and really love her she had gone through six of the seven rituals of defilement that were meant to defile a woman so completely that she was beyond redemption and even though she had gone through six of those seven and was slated to go through the final ceremony, which is called the Bride of Satan ceremony on Halloween of 1997. It was in that last year leading. Remember that date. She was set to be in a ceremony for Halloween 1997. All right, when is there? When was Anton LaVey supposed to have died, right? The 29th, however, there was a discrepancy and it was claimed that he actually died on the 31st. Oh my gosh, wait, this Up is amazing. Up to that uh, proposed ritual that she came into our church, she gave her life to the Lord. When we first took her in, um, I had this ring that my husband got me for our 14th anniversary, and God spoke to me and said, give her that ring. Um, give Deborah Joy that ring for her water baptism. And I thought, oh dear, well, I'm going to be in trouble. My husband, I give away a lot of things and I've given away a lot of <laughs> rings and jewelry and things. And I said, well, you're going to need to talk to my husband and tell him I need to give it away. And so I said, I'll give it to her in a minute, but tell him. Well, we're driving across the Fifth Street Bridge in Marysville. And my husband looks at me and he says, I think we need to get uh, this lady a ring for her water baptism. And I said, oh, I have just the ring that you're talking about. It's the one you got me for our 14th anniversary. While he was baptizing her that day in the water, he took the ring and he said, this ring is a symbol that you are the bride of Christ. Amen. And I remember Amen. thinking. And she was meant to be the bride of Satan. What is he saying you are the bride of Christ for? That seems so odd to me. But we found out that night as demons begin to rage through her and try to bite her finger off and say things like, uh, she's ours and she'll always be ours. She'll never be the bride of wow. Christ. We found out that she had been ritualized and was um, tortured from birth to be broken so badly that the demons would infiltrate her, take her over and make life hell for her. That is that trauma-based mind control programming. That was what MK Ultra was based off of. It's and real. her life had literally a been a living thing. hell. And uh, when that happened, her birth father, Anton LaVey, who was the founder of the Church of Satan, her the author of the father. Satanic Bible, and a very evil man, uh, he began plans to try to get her out of our house and back into the satanic coven that uh, he headed up. And so that put us into contact with the Church of Satan in Northern California. During that time, uh, he would uh, either call on a phone or a lot of times he would astral project and actually speak through uh, his daughter, Ray Ray LeVay, who I'll from this point on call Deborah Joy Bryan because she legally changed her name, became part of our family. During Amen. that process, Amen. he was able to astral project, uh, which means that he would leave his physical body. He would come in the spirit plane and do what we call a body jacking. It's a lot like a carjacking, only it uses a, a human body. But in a carjacking, uh, some violent criminal would just open the door and push the driver out of the way and take control. And uh, this happened. 
And because she had been raised with that trauma-based mind control, they probably had access to her before she even left. And so they were going to need the Lord to break that connection, really. happens also on the spirit uh, plane, and it's commonly referred to as zombieism, not the kind of thing you see in the movies, but traditional Trinidadian zombieism. Oh, wow. Uh, Black magic. Where a... Uh, all cult practitioner will astral project and, and uh, force its way into some human body where it can act and think uh, and speak through them and then uh, leave them uh, and go back into their own body. And um, this happens often. That's why many criminal acts are done and, and people don't remember having done them. But right. we had that happen. Wow, how many times do people say that they didn't remember what was happening or they felt like they were just watching what was going on through someone else's eyes? Oh, my, my, wow. Number of times uh, during those 10 and a half months. And it was during those times that Anton would say, you wait until Halloween gets here and Ray Ray will be there either as the bride of Satan or as the blood sacrifice for our Halloween ceremonies. So we had that ongoing threat. Wow. Of course, uh, we didn't know much about the occult. They said one way or another, we're gonna get her. When we uh, embarked on this journey, but we did have confidence in Jesus. We had Amen. confidence in the spirit of God and, and knew that the power of Christ was greater than any other power. And so he would mock us. Uh, he. You don't see them mocking any other religion like they mock Christianity and the Lord Jesus Christ. You Most often he would call me preacher boy. He'd say, preacher boy, you, when Halloween gets here, you'll see why I serve the dark master instead of the pathetic weekly, which was a disparaging term that he used to speak of Jesus Christ. She was standing in the lobby of the church one day, and one of my friends walked over and said, I think that's the lady that Benny Hinn prophesied over. And I said, oh, I don't think so. She was raised in Satanism. I don't think she would have been at a Benny Hinn crusade. And she said, well, ask her. I'm pretty sure it's her. That looks like that lady. She had headgear on from an accident. So I said, well, it might have been. And so I went to Deborah, and I said, Deborah, did a guy named Benny Hinn ever prophesy over you? And she said, yes, he did. And she said, I went to a conference with, it wasn't a conference, but a convention with um, my aunt wanted to take me about a year ago. And he called me out and said, a pastor and his wife will take you into their home and they'll treat you like they're your own, like your blood family or like your family to them. And um, you will get set free and God will use that to set many, many people free. Yes. And we really loved her through hell. That is like, you can't even predict something like that. Like, that's how God works. It's just so unimaginable, unpredictable, yet so perfectly perfect. For 10 months, day and night, we were doing intensive deliverance and really pretty much sleeping beside her, staying up with her. It was just extremely intense. She was so broken. She had so many demons. They, they did things to her like they would cut open a cow carcass and gut it and put a two-year-old little baby inside and put a tube in its mouth and bury it, sew that carcass up, bury it under the ground for three days. I'm sorry, I should have trigger warning because these things are hard to listen to. And they would do that to dismantle the person's mental capabilities so that they could implant many, many demons. And she would tell us horrific, horrific stories and just heartbreaking. But the love of God brought her to people that would treat her as a family and love her. And really, yes, it was a delight to us. One day she looked at me and she said, you're going to help me and I'm going to help you. Well, I remember thinking, how could she possibly help us? She has nothing. But what she did have was an understanding of the spiritual reality that we did not have. We were right. Christians and always wanted to do the right thing. Right. 
experience. But we really did not understand spiritual reality. We didn't understand what happens to people when they go through extreme abuse. We didn't understand the angelic and how much help they are. So during those experiences, we learned a ton and it was really quite amazing. It was intensive to say the least. I remember one time that I was home with her by myself. My husband was away fasting and my son and I we're sitting by the fireplace doing schoolwork and she came down and was kind of upset because her daughter who had tried to kill her was in prison in a juvenile authorities and she was watching on TV that they weren't treating them that well and she came down and was really upset and I should have been more attentive to understand that it really wasn't just her, it was a spirit that was using her and that would happen at the drop of a hat. It would be her and then it wow. switches over. They had that connection still that, and I mean, obviously they hadn't been able to cut that connection yet. So hopefully to where they can. Talking. It could be even in the middle of a sentence. Wow. They're talking along and shift in the middle of a sentence. And the demons took her over that night and basically they were going to kill me. It was quite intense. My son experienced a very intensive uh, assault against me, but in the middle of the demon grabbing me and throwing me up against the wall and flipping a table over and some crazy things and this little tiny short lady, I felt the love of God for her and I just felt God saying to reaffirm my love for her. Well, the demons were saying, you're blankety blanking with the big boys and you're out of your league. And it was quite intense. And they literally were but pulling Jesus, hair out never of me. Out of your league. quite crazy. And my son had ran to the other end of the house and was actually hiding and called somebody to come for help. But for me, I didn't feel afraid. I felt God's love for the broken woman that had been taken captive by the enemy. And I began to affirm that we love her and love always wins. Love never fails. And that thing that called itself Horus uh, let go of me. Did you hear? It called itself Horus. These things are these demons, these principalities. There are a lot of them. They say there's like a thousand per person or something like that. Like you need protection. At one point, and she came to her senses and she said, Sissy, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill you. I said, No. They won't kill me, but it was learning to love in spite of whatever happens that we needed to learn that journey of just absolute surrender and love for the most broken. So Halloween came and Halloween. Uh, when when we were there the day of Halloween, we were uh, taking good care of Deborah Joy, watching her carefully. We High knew alert. that the High Church alert. of Satan and Anton had been planning something sensational uh, for many months, and we just didn't know what. So uh, we had invited some of the intercessors from the Church of Glad Tidings to come over. We knew that the rituals would... And you have to remember, she had the, she was Anton LaVey's blood, so she had a purpose from birth. It happened during the witching hour, beginning at midnight and going to 2 or 3 a.m., and so we asked our team to come over at nine. We had been fasting and praying. We asked them to come over. That way we would have a good uh, three hour uh, prayer meeting before the witching hour arrived. And just about uh, 15 minutes before they were supposed to arrive, Deborah Joy came down and announced that she was going on a walk to go to 7-Eleven to get some coffee. Right. And uh, we knew that she knew better than that, but she seemed to be in her right mind. And so I said, Deborah Joy, uh, we can't have you do that. You know that the Church of Satan is after you tonight. And uh, so please go up to your room and pray. And so yeah. I stood watch at the front door of our old house in Yuba City. Cheryl stood watch at the back door. And we were praying. And as we were praying, uh, police cars with their lights and sirens, they, they came wow. and they uh, parked in front of our house. And uh, I got up to see what was going on. At that time, Deborah Joy ran uh, past me out of the house, was pointing at me saying that I was a, uh, an evil man, all kinds of profanity. 
and she began to say, he's sexually molested me and kept me as a captive for uh, almost a year. And um, so I, I went to... That had to have been a demon. She was most definitely possessed. Can you see how cunning and evil the devil can be? And you know what? It's like crazy. Like everything that he does is within certain limits, right? But the amount of power that he has on this earth, can you even begin to think about the amount of power that our creator of everything has? I, I mean, it, it's, it's, beyond, it's beyond comprehension, really. Uh, to get her to uh, keep her safe and to begin to rebuke the spirits that were mani manifesting through her, but little did I know that Anton had astral projected into her, took her over, uh, called 911, oh, told the police himself. that I'd been sexually abusing her and had held her captive for 10 and a half months. So the police were there to arrest me, and I didn't know that. When I ran toward Deborah Joy, they uh, drew their guns on me and, and uh, told me to get down on my face uh, on the lawn there and they were going to arrest me and, and take me to jail. Uh, again, Deborah Joy now, she's being animated by the spirit of her father, Anton LaVey. And so she was just- Can you imagine? Oh. Spewing profanities and cursing at me. And, yep. and, um, she, hated and you. she began to say, I told you preacher boy, when Halloween got here, you would know why we serve the dark Lord. They were going to arrest me. They put her in the squad car. And uh, we have a ministry at our church called Trauma Intervention Program. And uh, whenever there's a traumatic call, a 911 incident, we get a call and we dispatch somebody. And uh, my good friend, Lou Benninger, who's one of the pastors of the church, was on call that night and happened to be just around the corner from our house. He came by our house. And uh, we, we were praying. I was at that point sitting on the steps. They were uh, preparing to arrest me. And uh, I have an old saying that I know God is speaking to me when I think thoughts that are smarter than I am. But <laughs> in any event, uh, I suddenly had the idea from God to uh, get Cheryl's cell phone and have Lou Benninger, who again, he had his trauma intervention badge on, and uh, so he showed up and I said, Lou, uh, Deborah's at risk here. Uh, Anton's trying to kidnap her and get her up to the satanic ranch. Uh, you have to get in the back of the squad car and somehow uh, sneak this phone into her pocket so we can uh, track her. So Lou asked for permission as trauma intervention counselor to get into the squad car. He was able to slip the phone into her pocket. Uh, they took her away. Uh, Lou was also able to talk to the officers and uh, he said, this man is a respected pastor right. and uh, this woman has a long history of mental health. Oh, it's so hard to, and do you hear he's just about to say a long history of mental health. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of the um, afflictions that are today called mental health disorders used to be considered demonic affliction and they are literally they are demonic afflictions and that's why medications will only mask it and never make it go away because you're never going to actually get rid of it unless you pray and ha ask God to get rid of it or and, and rebuke it in the name of Jesus because these are demonic afflictions. Schizophrenia, schiz schizophrenic people are hearing actual spirits. Yes, the medication will dull it and make it not happen um, because they're shutting off a part of their brain. But those people are more suspect susceptible to hearing spirits and then the spirits or demons know that and then they want to talk to them and they bother them more and so they're deemed crazy uh, if you arrest him tonight and you're wrong about what's happened here you could all lose your jobs so they thought that through and agreed to uh, allow me to 
stay home that night. They just told me that I wasn't able to follow her. And if I tried to intervene in her life, that I would be arrested. So uh, they took her away, still under the power of Anton LaVey's spirit uh, that had uh, taken control of her physical body. And we prayed and said, oh God, don't let it end this way, help us. And uh, so we agreed to, to go to two different places. I was headed up to the Satanic Ranch that was outside of Grass Valley in California uh, to see if they were taking her there. And Cheryl and uh, Lou Benninger headed to a place that we had nicknamed Hell Motel because of the propensity of uh, witches and warlocks and occult practitioners uh, to congregate there. And so sure enough, they saw her going into a hell motel and uh, they called me and I uh, went and joined them there. We called our intercessors team who had uh, assembled at our house. And on the way over there, God just put in my mind uh, just one statement and that's uh, to cut Anton LaVey's silver cord. If you know anything about that, that comes from the writings of uh, King Solomon yes. in Ecclesiastes. Uh, he uses it as a synonym of death. He says, uh, serve God before your silver cord is cut. And I knew that... Connects your soul to your body, I imagine. That was a thought from God. I know it sounds very intense, and, and it is, but I told the intercessors, God, God, let's all pray one sure. thing, that God will cut Anton LaVey's silver cord. Um, and we begin to pray that. Uh, I was standing in the road by the front door of Hell Motel. Cheryl and Lou were at the back door. And suddenly, uh, Deborah Joy come running out the front door. And uh, she calls me daddy still to this day. She said, Daddy, help me. Uh, we put her in the car, took her back to where the intercessors were. And uh, she told me on the way over there that uh, she had come to her senses. She was in her room. It was filled with occult practitioners. Uh, her, her family was there, uh, Zena and Carla LeVay. And she said that the... Zena, the do me a favor. Look up Zena LeVay and do a side-by-side -side of her and Taylor Swift. And tell me what you think in the comments, like for real. The whole coven was gathered around Anton LeVay because he had bounced, as they call it. But uh, he was not able to... Uh, re-enter his body from the astral plane, which uh, is equivalent to death. Uh, and so, uh, so when when they were all focused on what was happening with Anton LaVey, and they were trying to conjure spirits and, and uh, pray to Lucifer to revive him, uh, but uh, they weren't watching her, and she jumped up and ran out. I was in the front uh, of the apartment, standing in the street, and was able to get her in the car, and and head for our house. Uh, so we got her home, we were praying, we were thanking God for his miraculous intervention. Uh, when suddenly a spirit manifest through her that was a very powerful spirit and um, her, her eyes turned red. It, it, we've done a lot of deliverance, but we knew this was a very powerful spirit. Uh, but it said, you've killed the high priest. And um, we, begin to rebuke it, ask what its name was. It said, my, I'm Leviathan. I'm Leviathan. the spirit of Anton LaVey. And you killed the Black Pope, which was a title that Anton LaVey used of himself. And so we rebuked the spirit and it left. And we were uh, just uh, left uh, looking at each other and yeah. saying, well, apparently <laughs> Anton's dead. Uh, the next thing that happened is another spirit manifests through Deborah Joy and said, you've killed my father, you're a murderer. And uh, when when the spirit said, you've killed my father, I knew it would be, was either Carla or Zena LaVey. Mm -hmm. And so I asked, uh, what spirit are you? Are you Carla or Zena? It was Zena. And she said, how dare you? You killed the black pope. And uh, we simply said, well, Zena, you know that we have authority to do that. And so you need to get back into your body leave Deborah Joy or we'll cut your cord also. Woo! And she instantly, uh, she disappeared. She left Deborah Joy. And that was on Halloween night of 1990. Uh, it's been many years ago now, but it's, it's so vivid in our memory. 
because at that point, no one else in the world knew that Anton LaVey had died. Wow. But we knew not only that he had died, but he had died uh, in a battle, a spiritual contest yes. between uh, spirit-filled Christians and his occult coven. And so, and it was the next day that we heard that Anton uh, had died uh, of uh, cardiopulmonary, um, his heart had stopped. And uh, the story after that, of course, is the demise of the Church of Satan. It never has recovered. We brought in <laughs> a young broken lady into our home. Turns out that she was raised to be the Bride of the Beast um, and involved deeply in the occult. And God brought her to a family that would just love her and take her in. And it was not easy, it was not fast, but God set her free and she is yes, now very, did. very happy and delighted uh, lady that lives uh, across the country, but is doing really well. She now has been married to Billy for uh, over 10 years and her family is saved, all of her family is saved. And it's a wonderful story of the mercies of God, a wonderful story of the, uh, power. the power of the Holy Spirit. But, but more even than that in my mind is the love of God for broken Amen. people. And Amen. that God will go to great lengths uh, to rescue those that call upon Him. And really our desire is to see people that have been through hell free and be able to worship the true living God and for heaven and earth to intersect. And um, so we've seen many miracles, seen amazing, amazing things happen during those days. We saw the dark side do its ugly stuff and we saw God and the angels do their amazing things. And so it's been a journey of learning and it's really an ongoing process for all of us. Freedom in our lives is ongoing process. Freedom in Deborah Joyce was. And I thank God that she was right, that we learned a lot from her and she learned a lot from us and we're all learning daily. And so that's my supernatural story. Uh, I've told it many times all over the world and each time I tell it, I'm overwhelmed with the amazing love and mercy of Christ and his ability to use ordinary people who believe in the power and the authority of his name. So Anton LaVey was killed by Christians. That is such an amazing story. God used Anton LaVey's own daughter as the catalyst to remove him. And to, I, can't, I can't believe he put those words in that man's in his in his mind for him to just say you know pray to cut the cord and and we all know that we have energetic cords and that we can be connected to people and now uh, you know uh, we can be con connected to demons as well and of course they lied and said that he died on the 29th i mean what a story. Do you really think that the Church of Satan wants to admit that their high priest was killed by God on their holy day? <laughs> I mean, that's just such a beautiful story and that she gets to live a beautiful life. You know, it's common that those of us who have seen the darker sides of life and humanity and have been through hell here on earth when we come to God and Jesus we we come so close and so hard because once you've seen the other side like you don't ever 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 want to go back and you just want to fight for Jesus I hope you guys enjoyed that story as much as I did. I think it's just such a beautiful story and a testament to the power of God and the power of prayer. And I thank you guys for coming back and joining me once again. Please do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, stay highly motivated.